Just take these six top tips because they're really, they're really quite useful um, for you to be able to take away, use for yourself, think about, and then potentially use for other people as well, okay? Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. Reduce access to the three A's. Okay, so this is <clears throat> something I've not covered before um, in these sessions. It's, it's, it, it, it's kind of a psychological um, kind of program, if you like, a psychological program. The three A's. The first is anger. The second is, I haven't got that in order, alienation. And the third is anxiety, okay? So, <clears throat> it says here, what will I read or see increase my, to increase my sense of community and connection? Sorry, will what I read or see increase my sense of community and connection? Or will it increase my sense of alienation, anger and anxiety? So, let's just talk about this one for a moment. Alienation, anger and anxiety. So, this is the choice that we have of what you put into your head on a daily basis. Remember Gandhi says, I do not let other people walk through my mind with, your, with their dirty feet. So in other words, I choose what I allow to go in to my head, okay? Remember, we've all got I've mentioned this before, our own filing cabinet, okay? When you perceive the world, you have six or seven things, so, well, seven to nine things, depending on if you're male or female, won't get into that now. Imagine this is your brain here, and everything during the day is bombarding your brain. Every single little thing, everything see, you see, you hear, you feel, everything that's going on, all of your thoughts that are in your head, your conscious mind filters through seven to nine things on average. It filters it in and that then, excuse my poor drawing, goes in to your filing cabinet, okay? Your filing cabinet, which is just here. Um, or if you're younger than me, you might have a hard drive. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but the point is, filing cabinet, okay? So you put everything in your file, right? Then your brain goes into your file and brings them out when you want them, sometimes when you don't want them, depending on how you're talking to yourself. So if you woke up this morning and went, I'm tired, I'm knackered, I'm worn out, today is gonna be a long day, your brain goes, right, just give me a minute, I need to go into the filing cabinet and pull out, I'm tired, I'm knackered, it's gonna be a long day file, because that's what you've asked me for. So remember, <clears throat> your brain is the most powerful machine on the planet, but it will only do what you tell it to. So we've got to be careful of what we filter into the filing cabinet. That's what I'm saying, okay? So, and Pete, you'll remember us having a conversation about this way back in the day. When lockdown first started, um, as a responsible employer, I watched, and I know Pete did the same, I watched every single piece of news I could find on what was going on um, because we needed the information to be able to make business decisions and look after people and all of that type of stuff. Um, the problem was, if you watch loads and loads and loads of bad messages, guess what starts to happen? You start to feel alienated, you start to get angry and frustrated, or you get an anxious about the time, about the situation, about what might happen as well. We start making things up at that point. So, top tip number one for you today is I'd like you to really think this week, what are you gonna allow go in your head? Yeah, are you going to watch the news 10 times or are you just gonna watch it once that you need? Are you going to, um, what are you going to read? And if you are reading something, what do you want from it, yeah? How much rubbish do you read on social media? Yeah, how much rubbish goes in over and over and over again? Think about the people, dare I say, that you hang around with, okay? And I know you might be isolated and stuff, but you know, we've talked about this before guys, those Monday morning grunters, those naysayers, those mood hoovers, those emotional vampires, all of those people, 
Sometimes they like walking through our head with our muddy feet. So, will what you read and listen to or see or take in this week, will it increase your sense of community and connection? In other words, is it helpful stuff that you're gonna allow in? Or is it hindering stuff that's going to generate anger and anxiety and alienation? Yeah, from the situation. In psychology, they, they're called the three A's. They're things that we, we allow stuff to go in. It starts to alienate us because it, it just does. Um, uh, we get angry about it at some point and it, of course it generates anxiety. There's a great old proverb um, about how we look at the world. Um, there was a guy going through, uh, imagine uh, imagine uh, uh, remote villages, okay? And there's a guy going from one village and he's walking uh, and he's walking and walking, nobody in sight for miles, and then he comes upon uh, a monk. And he says to the monk, um, can you tell me what the people are like in um, the, uh, the village ahead? Um, he, said, uh, 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 he said, I've just come from the village before, and the people weren't very nice, they weren't great, they, 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 they weren't very welcoming. And the monk said, unfortunately, you're probably going to find that going uh, uh, in the next village as well. Sorry to tell you that. So off they go. Somebody else comes along another day and says to the monk, can you tell me what the people in the like, people are like in the, the village ahead? I've just come from the last village. And the guys, the people in the last village were really welcoming uh, and, uh, and they really looked after me and it was great to be there. And the monk said, of course, well, do you know what? You're probably going to find that in the village ahead. They're nice people as well. And the whole point of that story is that we drive it, but we need to choose the way we take things in. Remember, you've got so, so many things in bombarding your brain every day. What are the seven or nine things that you're putting into your filing cabinet? Will they increase community and connection? Or are they going to increase your anxiety and your fear and your anger and, and then start to annihilate you? I <laughs> get my words out in a minute, yeah? The point I'm making, choose what you watch, choose what you listen to, um, choose, if you can, to not be around negative, hindering people um, and we need to start talking to ourselves in a better way, remember, okay? Helpful self-talk. Uh, this will be a good day. I am going to feel good, okay? Even if your self-talk is, things are all up in the air at the moment, that's okay. It's okay like that for now, okay? In fact, I did a session uh, about that uh, many, many months ago. Um, it's okay that, you know, everything doesn't have to be perfect right now. Sometimes it can't be because of the pandemic. So be okay that things aren't perfect at the moment, um, but we still need to be aiming for, you know, aiming for best um, and give yourself a bit of a break. But choose what goes into your head. So that's number one, choose what goes in. You can all make that choice this week. Number two, uh, seek health, seek out healthy activities. Okay, now again, this is something that you guys know I've talked about, however, slightly different twist here, okay? I've put a picture of children up on the board, okay? Because what I'd like you to think about is this. First of all, doing healthy activity we know helps the brain, gives us better chemicals, releases endorphins, and so on and so on and so on. But especially physical uh, um, 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 uh, activities, yeah? Um, something called your flow, when you get into the flow of things. So if you, you know, play, I don't know, um, uh, let's say you play uh, 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 football for argument's sake, okay? And I know that's tough at the in and out at the moment with pandemic, yeah? But, you know, you, 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 know, you, you might feel a bit stressed, you might feel a bit anxious, da, da, da. you go play football, you get stuck into it, and you get into the flow. And what that does, is it takes you away from time or self. So it takes you out of the reality of what's going on and the worry you've got about yourself and everything that's going on and you get into the flow. 
and it takes that, it gives your brain a break at that point, okay? So um, we've hopefully got football for my daughter's football team, I'm a, I'm a coach, we've hopefully got that on Saturday, um, we'll see, uh, we've got a, an FA meeting tonight, because um, they said it was okay, and now the tier system we don't know, but what when happens is no matter how stressed I am, no matter how long a week I've had, no matter how much burnout I've had during that week, when I start coaching that game, all time and self goes away. Yeah, and I can't tell you how great I feel after the fact of, uh, of that game. So find something that you lose your flow. Okay, sorry, that you get into a flow and lose yourself in it, okay? The reason I've put children up there is because somebody many years ago asked me a great question, okay? And the question was, John, what did you like to do as a child? What made you laugh as a child? Okay, and I was like, why are you asking me that? And they said, because what you'll probably find is whatever you used to do that you really enjoyed as a child, go and do it again. Go and do it again. There's nothing stopping you. Go and doing it again. So I think my answer at the time was, what did I really enjoy? I really enjoyed going to scouts and, and kayaking and uh, abseiling and all this type of stuff. And when they, when they said to that question, well, go and do it again. I found a local climbing wall, I went and did a bit of climbing, I, I found a local little canoe place and went and did some canoeing. Um, and I've recently asked myself that question again to take my children there. So just that's why there's a picture of children up. What did you enjoy as a child? Because you'll probably enjoy it as an adult, but you may have not found time for it in the past, okay? So find something that you're gonna enjoy, even if you have to go back to your childhood, and then try and get into the flow. That's when you lose yourself, when you lose the time, uh, and so on and so on, okay? Um, when you get into the zone, endorphins start to get released. And endorphins do two things. They, one, give you energy, and two, eat away at negative chemical in the system. They eat away at all the bad stuff, which is why endorphins really, really, really useful, okay? Um, and also, sounds a bit dodgy this, but also involve your body hands-on. So it needs to be, they say things like woodworking and things that, welding and stuff that you've got to do with your hands. It helps you to get into the flow because of the concentration of what you're having to do, you know. It's quite widely known um, during lockdown, you know, I was working every day but I was also getting home at a normal time, I was quite strict to myself, whereas normally I'd maybe not get home till 8, 9 o'clock. I built a 24 foot workshop. Uh, in my garden, um, and it was just something to do um, to, to, to release the endorphins and so on and so on. So using hands is quite good um, as well with that. So seek out healthy activities, not only for the endorphin release, but to lose that sense of time and self as well. That will help with the isolation. That will it'll take you out of it, okay? Even if you're, even if you're exercising in isolation, It'll still take you out of it, okay? Uh, what did you enjoy as a child, as we've said, okay? Number three, <clears throat> increase your sense of productivity, okay? Now, uh, productivity um, are, are, is, a, well, it should be, is a great antidote for loneliness. It might not seem it, but being productive helps with isolation, helps with loneliness, okay? However, it's what you class as being productive, okay? So, um, a lot of people have put things off during COVID, okay? We can't do that yet, okay? Let's put that off till, okay? Uh, uh, but what we have to sometimes do is if we don't feel like we're getting anywhere, we need to take some action, okay? So start an activity you've been putting off. Even if you don't finish it this year, just get it started, okay? Uh, Christine, I agree 100%. Doing this all the time to keep me sane. Okay, great, fantastic, Christine. Thank you for that, yeah? Um, so, <laughs> put a nice little red face. Um, do something to keep you start, to get you started on something. It doesn't matter what it is, but take the step, you know, buy the paint for the bedroom that you needed to paint or, you know, whatever it may be. This year has given us lots of reasons not to do things. Okay, lots of reasons. Um, 
I had a great example yesterday, somebody, uh, uh, somebody that in the next office to ours, in our office building, um, they were due to get married um, in the middle of the first lockdown, okay, big wedding, da 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 da, all this type of stuff, obviously couldn't happen, all cancelled, and so on and so on, she's actually my physio, she's been working on my shoulder, so I've been seeing her once a month, and stuff like that, and I've been asking her, you know, what about the wedding and everything, oh, you know what, we're thinking about doing it in a couple of years now, and actually, we, it's probably not going to be the same for the next six months anyway, and all this type of stuff, and but as I was seeing her, she was getting more frustrated. She was getting more for, uh, anxious, alienation, anger, all those things, yeah? She started getting more and more and more, yeah? I came in yesterday, I kid you not, and one of her colleagues came up to me, shoved a picture like that on her phone, and went, look what Hannah did yesterday. And I was just like, looked. And I went, she got married, she drove to Gretna Green, I don't know if that's allowed or not to be honest, but she drove to Gretna Green, got married. Yeah, so talk about not putting stuff off, yeah. This year stopped us from doing a lot. It stopped us from doing a lot, okay. We, uh, the, our mindset is, we'll do, we'll do when we've got a vaccine, when, when things are back to normal. Yeah, let's do it then, let's do it then. I urge you, it will help with isolation impact as well, okay, and just general well-being and feeling good. Um, start an activity you've been putting off. Just get it started. Just do one thing to get it started, okay? Um, create a routine and make your bed. Now I know, Christine, you also liked this one, didn't it? Make your bed, okay? This is about routine for the day, okay? Right at the beginning of last lockdown, there was a great YouTube channel, a YouTube thing that came out. Uh, I'll tell you to go and look at it again. It's an, it's an ex-Navy Admiral SEAL, uh, and he talks about, if you want to change the world, make your bed. And the whole point, if you just Google make your bed in, in, uh, in YouTube, you'll find it. Um, he talks about when you make your bed, that's one job completed for the day. That one job will lead to many jobs, and by the end of the day, you will feel successful and like you've contributed something to your day and society. Uh, and if you have a bad day, when you come home, you have a nicely fresh made bed, ready for a good night's sleep and to try again the next day. So, if you want to be productive, Start when you wake up in the morning, make your bed. Okay, that's one job ticked off. What's the next job? And so on and so on. The more productive you are, the more it will help with isolation, impact, and loneliness. Okay? Number three. Number four. Connect with others. So again, this is something that we've talked about um, over the months. Um, you guys particularly been okay, actually. Think about it compared to a lot of businesses that I've seen um, just because we can't see people doesn't mean we can't connect with them um, you know a few people on here will know the example my 90 year old nan has learned how to use FaceTime um, and uh, she's got like one of those Google things in fact she rang me and she went I'm John, John Christopher that's what she calls me I've got a Google that's what she told me I've got a Google uh, you can now Google. Uh, no problem, Christine. Thank you. Um, the point is, we can all connect using the technology. We're using Microsoft Teams now. You've got FaceTime, WhatsApp video, Facebook Messenger video as well. Uh, one of the best purchases I made at the beginning of lockdown was Facebook Portal. I don't know if anybody's seen them. It's like a, it's like a big camera that hooks onto your TV at home and, it, and it, it's got tracking technology. So you, you've got real life size people you can move around and see it's just fantastic uh, and it's one of the best investments I made uh, but it makes sense because I'm a high yellow profile so the moment I was isolated from other people I needed a way to be able to get my fix as it were so we can do that so we, we can connect with others but one of the best ways to connect with others is first of all if, as Pete said earlier, if we know that we've got our mask on first and we've done those other things that I've just said, who could you help today? Who could you connect with today and help? Okay, I, I, I think this country has been better at this since COVID than before COVID. There are more people now just ringing people and video calling people to see if they're okay because they know that they can't see them face to face. So who could you help? Who could you connect with? By the way, you don't have to know them.
to connect with them. I connect with people on LinkedIn all the time, I don't know half of them. I connect with them, ask them a question, offer some support and help if, I, if, if that's what I want to do. Um, and I connect with them. So it does. you don't have to know people to always do this. But I'm sure you know enough people that you could ring today or just you know see if somebody needs some support or a chat or whatever it may be when it comes to it, okay? Embrace social technology, as we've said, okay? Practice your listening skills. Now this is a great one, okay? You can connect with people and then just listen. A lot of people, I think, struggle with the connection thing because they're like, well, what do I say? Well, you don't have to say a lot. Ask them some questions and listen. Yeah, uh, the art of asking questions is key. How are you? How have you been? Yeah, what things have been making you feel really, really, uh, really, really bad or really, really good? And what can I help you? Um, Pete put, um, my dad passed away several years ago. Uh, this week, one of my dad's old friends phoned uh, phoned me uh, to see, phoned me my to see, how she, uh, what, th I th is that your mum? Yeah, okay, my mum, yeah. Um, uh, one of my uh, old friends phoned my mum to see how she was. Normally she just gets a card from him, but she said that this year he was not sending a card because phoning everyone instead, he is 92 years old. Pete, that is a fantastic example. That is absolutely brilliant, yeah? Who could you connect with today? And just ask them how they are. Yeah, because remember, we all, we're all feeling a bit of that isolation impact. Yeah, some more than others, okay, but we're all feeling a little bit. Um, Pete, that's a great example, yeah? Um, and just those phone calls make a big, big, big difference. And if you're worried about what to say, just write a few questions before you ring them. How are you? How have you been? Yeah, how have you found the, you know, how have you found, you know, being in on your own and stuff? Has it been okay? Do you need any support? Yeah, is there anything I can help you with? Yeah, or even, they might go, oh gee, it's just nice to talk to somebody else, tell me about what's going on in your life. No problem whatsoever, okay? So, where you can connect with other people, it will majorly help with that isolation impact, okay? Number five, increase self-care and self-compassion. Now, you can see this picture that I've put up here, it's like a heart with a, with a, uh, a spanner in it, okay? Um, do you know when I typed in self-compassion into Google, all the pictures I got back were huggy. Does that make sense? Like people hugging each other and you know all that and somebody hugging themselves and all that type of stuff and um, it annoyed me a little bit <laughs> and the reason it annoyed me is because self-compassion it sometimes felt as a bit fluffy isn't it? And it doesn't have to be fluffy self-compassion but, but it is just being a little bit less harsh on yourself, okay? Um, last week, when I was in um, uh, running courses, um, I asked the question, and I, I do ask this question on day one of most of my courses. Write down some words that you can think of that describe you when you're at your best. That's the question I would normally ask, okay? So write down all the words that you can think of that describe you when you are at your best. And then I give the group 60 seconds, yeah? 60 seconds. And do you know how many people really struggle with that exercise? The amount of people that struggle, even if they write something, I'll say to them, what was that like to do? And they'll go, oh, do you know what? It's a bit hard, that was a bit difficult, a bit hard, yeah. Some people, I've had in my courses before, can't write anything. They can't answer that question, what they like at the best, okay? And the reason for it, the reason it's uncomfortable, the reason people struggle with it, is because we don't often ask ourselves what we like at our best. We don't remind ourselves of what we like at our best. We're not kind to ourselves and actually remember the good stuff that, we are, uh, that we're all about and feel good about it. What we tend to do is beat ourselves up about all the bad stuff that we do in life and other people then beat you up for all the bad stuff you do in life. So there's no balance in the force. So for me, self-compassion is not fluffy, 
it's bringing balance back into the force. And I know I'm using a Star Wars analogy, guys. I do apologize, but you've got dark side, you've got Vaders and Jedis, haven't you? Yeah? Well, we beat ourselves up all the time. That's the dark side of the force. We don't as much talk to ourselves in a great way and show a bit of self-compassion yeah, and remind ourselves what we're good at and why people like us and things like this. And so there's no balance. What we need to do is do a little bit more of this so we can bring balance back into that force, okay? It doesn't mean you've got to stand in the mirror and hug yourself on the back of it, which is why I struggled to find a picture that I wanted to share with you, okay? Mental health starts with self-talk. You know that. Thinking, emotions, actions, results. What to say when you talk to yourself. It starts with that. You know it does. Um, have, having a temporary mindset as well. This is quite an important one for right now. There's lots of people getting annoyed of all the stuff they couldn't do this year, like I mentioned earlier, okay? And instead of going, okay, it is the way it is for now. Instead of doing that, people are getting more frustrated. When we were about to go into tears the other day, when the tears were, I think it was last Thursday, when the tears were about to be announced, Three people came into my office, right, that day. All social distance, don't worry, right? The, the window cleaner came in, uh, somebody else came in, somebody else came in, right? Three people came in and went, oh, do you know what? I think we're gonna be in tier three in Staffordshire. I think we are. And on the third time, I felt like saying, do you know what? I don't care. I don't care anymore about what tier I'm in. As long as I'm healthy, my children and family are healthy, and I've still got some kind of job that I can go out and help people with, then do you know what? I'll deal with it one way or the other. But for a long time during COVID, especially the first lockdown, my mindset was, what, what, when can we do, when can we do the, when can we get back to normal? When can we do what we need to do properly? And so on and so on. And I've actually got to the point now where I go, do you know what? Just for a short while, I need a temporary mindset. And the temporary mindset is, it's okay the way it is for a short while. It's okay, this is okay, no problem. I'm healthy, children healthy, family healthy. Okay, touch wood, dare I say, touch some wood, yeah? And all that type of stuff. So it's okay that it's like this. We can have a temporary mindset. Don't put yourself under massive pressure, everything's gotta be perfect. Because at the moment, it might not be able to. That's okay, aim for best every day when you get up in the morning. Temporary mindset, okay? Flip to helpful future, okay? So, if you're thinking about how bad it is now, flip to the future and go at some point, it'll be great. Doesn't matter when, we know what we're in now, temporary mindset, that's okay, and in the future, it's gonna be great again. So no problem at all, we've got something to aim for, okay? It's okay not to be okay. And finally, the last thing, two minutes to go. Increase your sense of awe, okay? Now, awe is not joy or happiness, it's a state where yourself disappears. The reason I have put this up here, okay? Um, hang on a second. Um, the reason I've put that, that's the rock in Australia, the great, the great rock, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, yeah? I once saw uh, a documentary done it was Billy Connolly traveling around uh, Australia. And he said something that really helped me in life. And he looked at the rock and all of this miles of, of land around him, just him, could nobody else for miles and miles around. He looked at it and he went, what a beautiful feeling of insignificance. Those were the words he used, a beautiful feeling of insignificance. And that's what awe does for us. It makes us think, do you know what? There's a bigger picture than me here and I'm in awe of nature. Go for a walk in, 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 in the woods. Be in awe of nature or, you know, go on a boat ride or, you know, whatever. I get it walking around the golf course, to be honest, looking at the birds and the squirrels and, you know, while I'm looking for my ball in the rough, by the way. But that's beside the point, yeah? There's a center of awe. So do something that gives you a sense of awe, that beautiful insignificance of us there's something out there that's bigger in the world. So let's stop all our little stresses for a moment and look at the awe of what we've got uh, around us, okay? Um, com common sources, oh, we've got them there. Uh, uh, Aries Rock, thank you very much, Eddie. That's appreciated, yeah. Uh, it was gonna come to me at some point, yeah? Um, people, think of, you know, remember when your children were born? 
and how that felt. Yeah? Now, obviously, if you're a lady, it might have felt very, very painful. For a man, it was very, very, very special. Uh, but, um, you know, just think of things that, you know, look at nature, be humbled by what's around us. So have a sense of awe. Music. Lo get lost in some music, but some powerful music, yeah? Whatever that music is, yeah? Just some powerful music, it just gets you kind of going, wherever it may be, because you just need to lose that sense of self for a, a few minutes a day and have that sense of awe.